On this six month anniversary of the Moore tornado, we remember the children who died in Plaza Towers Elementary. Yeah, we spent the past four months investigating disaster plans in our schools here in Green Country. If a disaster were to happen here, what would happen at your child's school? In the wake of the Moore tornado and the Newtown school shootings, state lawmakers beefed up the law intended to ensure your child's safety in public schools both during man-made and natural disasters. That's a comfort for Emily Case. Well, I think there is a, a big need for school safety. Her daughter Isabel is in second grade at Dewey Elementary. And they do tornado drills and fire drills. In a tornado drill, my students, um, when the drill goes off, they get underneath their desk. State Senator John Ford of Bartlesville is one of the law's authors. Every school district must have, must have a plan in place on how to deal with different disasters. <laughs> In September, two news investigators surveyed school districts in Tulsa, Washington, Wagner, and Creek counties. We found every district did have emergency plans as required by law. But only 58% in our survey filed those plans with their county emergency management office as then required by law. Among those that did not, districts as large as Broken Arrow or as small as Dewey Public Schools. Those districts were filing plans with their city emergency managers or local police or fire departments instead of the county. David Wilkins is superintendent of Dewey Public Schools. Um, I think there was some confusion on how that was supposed to be filed. Um, on our, and I went back and looked it up, up on our accreditation report and really all it says is was with local emergency officials. Two news investigators found the confusion didn't go away when the beefed up emergency plan law went into effect November 1st. The beefed up law requires that school districts file disaster plans with all emergency responders within the district's boundaries no later than November 1st of each year. So November 1st, the two news investigators began calling every district in the same four county area to see if updated plans were filed with all first responders. Before and after the law change, Tulsa Public Schools did file with the proper agencies. But as we contacted other districts, two news investigators found that most districts were filing with some but not all the emergency responders, among them Liberty Mounds, Skytook, and Caney Valley Schools. Even Dewey Superintendent was still unsure where exactly to file. It, it didn't specify exactly who it was supposed to go to. The it he's referring to is the law. Some districts, including Sand Springs and Sperry, interpreted the law to mean that plans only needed to be filed with local police or fire departments, or that plans only had to go to their city or county emergency manager, and that agency would then give copies to all the other agencies. But that's not true. State Department of Education lawyer Kim Ritchie says that districts can't pick and choose which agencies to file with or rely on other agencies to distribute their plans. The legal obligation uh, lies on the school district to provide copies of those plans to every emergency agency residing in that district. So if a district is relying upon a city manager or upon one specific agency to distribute those plans on, on behalf of the district, um, I, think, I think that that puts the school district at risk of being out of compliance with, with the law. But as you can see in this database that we compiled, districts are picking and choosing. Some told us that they filed their disaster plans with county emergency managers or law enforcement or health departments. We also found the misunderstandings about which agency schools must file with isn't limited to school districts. Even the director of the Tulsa Area Emergency Management Agency says he thought that Broken Arrow and Sperry schools didn't have to file with his office because they filed with emergency managers in their cities. Any law is open to interpretation and uh, as this law is written it's, it's somewhat vague so it's uh, you're going to have different interpretations. School disaster plans are intended to save lives in an emergency. After we pointed out this problem, Richie said that the Education Department will make sure that schools know where to file their emergency plans. Certainly, if, if there's confusion out there, we can, we can certainly make, you know, make an effort to revisit the issue and make sure that districts are fully aware of this, of this obligation. What's important is, is that the responders and the school staffs work together to prepare for emergency and disaster. That's the opposite. To do that, so schools must file disaster plans with every emergency responder within the district something that Emily thinks is important for the safety of her children. I think it's good and I think even our, you know, responders should correlate more with the schools. So how can you make sure that your child is safe at school? Ask your child's school district if it filed plans with every emergency response agency in the district. That way, if a disaster happens, that plan isn't just sitting in a file drawer, it's actually being put to use.